We're looking at the topic, understanding the blessedness of a revival. Understanding the blessedness of a revival. What I'm about to say will have to stay with you and I for us to touch what is being taught. And that is this, that every revival is the work of the Holy Spirit. I want you to shout out loud with me, want to go. Every revival is the work of the Holy Spirit. Louder, please say it in one sentence. Want to go. Is the work of the Holy Spirit. Two, you must note that in every revival, Jesus is at the center. In every revival, Jesus is at the center. Until we lose our reputation, revival cannot come. At the center of every revival is Jesus at the center. Number three, in every revival, we are marked with the fear of God. Now please hear this. It was not mentioned in first service because I wasn't licensed to say it then. But in every revival, you see God the Father, you see Jesus the Son, and you see the Holy Ghost. I say it again. Every revival is the work of the Holy Spirit. In every revival, Jesus is at the center. So where we have been at the center, we must move for him to take his place. And number three, at every revival, we are marked by the fear of God. I pray that this month for you and I, we will not just teach revival. We will touch revival. I'm speaking to somebody here. There is a fire coming upon all of us from priest to the people. Are you there at all? Let me hear you shout amen. What is a revival there for? Quickly. Because this will have to take a few minutes to give the Holy Spirit time to walk his walk. What is a revival? Number one, a revival is a move of the Spirit of God among the people. In Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 to 7. Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 7. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. We can stop there. A revival is the move of the spirit of God among the people. Number two, what is a revival? A revival is the manifestation of divine presence among the people. Manifestation of divine presence. In Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17, the Lord our God in the midst of thee is mighty. A revival is the manifestation of divine presence among the people. Number three, a revival is a divine visitation among the people. That is heaven visiting the earth. Hmm. I don't think we truly understand what a revival is even when we say we are in a revival. A revival is a divine visitation. A divine visitor steps in. Ah, and it begins to move from high to high, touching people. Pride is broken in a revival. Relevance is shattered in a revival. Fire is burning in a revival. Raise your hand where you are. I am tired of church as usual. 
I came here with a hunger. I came here with a test. I came here as one that desires to see something happen in my generation. And in the name of Jesus Christ, starting from this location, a revival will break loose in our midst. In Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 2. Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O oh Lord, revive thy walk in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known and in wrath, remember mercy. Genesis 21 verse 1 and 2. And the Lord visited Sarah as he has said. And did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Lift your hands where you are. In the name of Jesus, fire will hit your house. I said fire will hit your house. Ayoko. Hembra no sikla. Dos cabra neno sane nenea nanana. E nono sanga ne keniash. A barakatatia. E susus akata. E parada payandos. E kasafa rande totonde. A banke gananose. A rabatententos en gana. That is divine visitation. It will happen. Number four, this is very important. A revival is a spiritual awakening. When revival hits, sleep disappears. And I'm talking about spiritual sleep and slumber. In a revival, the spirits of men are awakened. And you and I will bear witness the church today. Our spirits are dead. But in the midst of a revival, there is an awakening. So the word awakening means coming alive. Now in Ezekiel 37, verse 1 to 14, which is the picture of a church yet to be revived. He said, prophesy. And wind came in. Who is the wind? The Holy Ghost. And everything began to take shape. And there arose a great army. I don't know about you. I'm tired of reading about revivals. I want to see it happen in my time. I want to see it happen in my day. I want to. Now hear me. Even if revival hits for one week. You can never forget it for a lifetime. Raise your hand where you are. For all who are hungry and thirsty. In our lifetime. We will see the move of God again. Let me hear the loudest. Amen. Let me hear the loudest, amen. amen. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 21. Spiritual awakening. Jeremiah 30 please. And verse 21. And their nobles shall be of themselves. That is they were ordinary people. Something happened to them. They became nobles. And he said their governor also shall arise from them. Proceed from them. And I will cause him to draw near. And he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engaged his heart? In approaching unto me. A spiritual awakening. Awakening. You can't talk about a revival without awakening. Suddenly, people become sensitive to God. And insensitive to the world. Lesusaga. Right now, we are sensitive to the world. And insensitive to God. But in the midst of a revival, we become sensitive to God. And insensitive to the world. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in the midst of this new season of glory, each one of us will be awakened to God. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is what a revival is, number five. A revival is a divine season where God openly manifests the rule and the reign of his son. A revival is said to occur when three things happen. Number one, when the heart of man Begins to pant after God. As the day panted for the waters, so my soul longed after thee. You alone are my heart. Desire and I long to work. 
worship you. Come on, raise your hand as the dear panic for us. God is panted for the waters so my soul longed after thee. Begins to pant after God. Then a revival has broken loose. We've panted after money. We've panted after friendships. But Psalm 42 verse 1 in the Passion Translation says, I long to drink of you, O God. Drinking deeply from the streams of pleasure flowing from your presence. My longings overwhelm me for more of you. The more of him you discover, the more you know you don't know more. There is a panting. In verse 2, my soul thirsts, pants. And longs for the living God. You get to a point where you say, I'm tired of reading about what God did before. I want to see God do it now. Panting after him. That forms your heart desire. Your longing. Your drive. Your sleeping. Your waking up. Take the money. Take the title. But give me Jesus. That's what a revival is. I would rather trek on the street and have God trekking with me than drive and God is not with me. Lift up your hands where you are. How many people are thirsty? How many people are hungry? Keep your hands lifted up. Now may the fire of revival touch you right now. Fire, fire, fire. Hungry, thirsty. Hungry, thirsty, hungry. Thirsty. I'm tired of all the games. I want the real deal. I want to walk in the reality of the scripture. I want to walk in the reality of the Bible. I, I don't want to read it and claim it is Rema. Rema without action is deception. I want to touch the power. I want to, I want to see the power. I want to move in that realm. Take everything away. Take title. Take relevance away. And give me Jesus. Heart panting after him. Heart panting after him. Number two. A revival is said to occur. When walking in the fear of God. Becomes a way of life. Walking in the fear of God. 
becomes a way of life. Jeremiah chapter 3, few scriptures here, verse 12 to 14. Jeremiah 3, verse 12 beginning. Quick, I want that on the screen. Go and proclaim these words towards the north. And say, return thou backsliding Israel. Say the Lord, and I will not cause my anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful. Say the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. 13. Only acknowledge thine iniquity. That's all it takes. That thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers on every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice. Say the Lord. 14. Quick. Turn, O backsliding children, share the Lord. For I am married to you. And I will take you one of a city, two of a family. And I will bring you to Zion. Return, return, turn, turn. And it is only then that I will give you pastors after my heart. Who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Higher. And when you be multiplied, it shall come to pass when you be multiplied and increased in the land. In those days, said the Lord, they shall no more say the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Neither shall it come to mind. Neither shall they remember it. Neither shall they visit it. Neither shall they be done anymore. Only then, when priests and people turn, only then, only then, only then can we claim that there is a revival. I'm not missing my words. When priest and people turn. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 21 to 30. We better read it and get it. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse, verse 21 to 30. I will breeze through this right now. Quick. Now, hear now these old foolish people and without understanding. Which have eyes and see not. Which have ears and hear not. Fear not me. Say the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence. Which have placed the sand for a bound. Of the sea. By a perpetual decree. That it shall not pass. And though the waves thereof toss themselves. Yet cannot prevail. Though they roar. Yet they shall not pass over it. 23, but these people had a revolting and a rebellious heart. They have revolted and gone. Neither said they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God. That give it rain, the former rain, the latter rain, in the season. He reserved unto us the appointed weeks of harvest. Your iniquities have turned away these things. And your sins have withholding good things from you. For among my people, among my people, among my people. So they are here in the church. I found wicked men. They lay wait. He that setteth snares, they set a trap. And they catch men. Wickedness in the house of God. As a cage is full of birds, so are the houses full of deceit. Therefore, they have, be, they have become great and wax rich. So they, they are doing well, but I'm not with them. They are waxing fat. They shine, yea, they overpass the dreads, the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper. So they are doing well. The right of the needy, do they not judge? Shall I not visit these things? Ay, 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 ay. Say the Lord, shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? Verse 30, a wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. But today, every one of us will have the opportunity to get it right. No one will live here on the wrong side of God. I didn't hear the loudest amen. amen. Jeremiah 6 verse 13 to 19. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. From the prophet unto the pastor. Everyone deal it falsely. Verse 14. They have healed the heart of my people. Of the daughter of my people. Slightly. So they have healed also the crushing of my people. Now, the daughter of my people. Slightly there means superficially. 
That is in deceit. Saying, peace, peace. And yet, there is no peace. Telling them, God is pleased with you. And God said, that's not the message I sent you. Now, go on to see what happens. Were they ashamed when they committed abomination? No, they were not ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, said the Lord. Verse 16. Thus, said the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths wherein is the good way and walk therein. The old path is the good path. And then you will find rest for your souls. But they are proud in their generation. So they say, we will not. Why? Things are working for us. Not knowing that it is working doesn't mean he is there with you. That you are prospering in your business doesn't mean Jehovah is with you. We just read it. Ha, verse 17. Also, I set watchmen. <laughs> watchmen. Over you saying, hacking to the sound of the trumpet or the alarm. But they said, we will not hack him. Therefore, hear ye nations and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon these people. Even the fruit of their thoughts. Because they not hacking to my voice, nor my law, but rejected it. Lord, wherever we have gone wrong, forgive us. Even to our thoughts. He said, I will bring upon them the fruit of their thought. Forgive us. A wave sweeping among God's people. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Forgive us, O oh Lord. When a revival breaks loose, you become aware of your sin. You become aware that you have not matched up to his demand. You become aware from priest to the people. Forgive us, O oh Lord. It's not our big churches that mean that God is there. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Ha, cleanse me. Make me a vessel unto honor. Fit for the master's use. I'm prepared to every good work. Ah, we need those days back again. When the altar will be opened and there will be a rush. By being aware that God is not pleased. So a revival is said to occur when walking in the fear of God becomes a way of life. Give me now Jeremiah 32, 39 and 40. Jeremiah 32, 39, and 40. Quick. Thank you, Lord. 39, 39. And I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and for the children after them. Verse 40, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And I will not turn away from them to do good, to open doors. But I will put my fear in their hearts and they shall not depart from me. Lift your hands in holy expectation. Lord, put your fear in my heart. Number three, a revival is set to occur. When multitudes too great to be numbered continue to flow into the church, thereby turning the church to a solution center. We've not seen it yet. We've not seen it yet. We've not seen multitude yet. And on the next Sabbath day, almost the entire city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. No organized outreach. But I call this fire rich. They were on fire 
and everybody. Because when you are on fire, people come to watch you burn. I have a few pictures here from the, what I call the Rajioba Revival. I have cried in every church I've been to, Lord, make it happen again. And somebody's wondering, are you not praying for Canaan land kind of revival? No, I want Rajioba. I know what I saw. Look at people like animals. And they were rushing. Ask me how many times we remember going for outreach. I can't. But there was something burning on 38th Rajoba Street. The fire was intense. Those are multitudes you see on the galleries there. Four levels crowd packed. I saw it. I know what it means for human beings to be sandwiched. Those days when the gate is open for the next service, your leg can't touch the ground. You are just moving with the crowd. Everybody's moving you. When the door opens, people are jumping through the window. I can't remember going out with one flyer. There are days of flyer, but there are days of fire. And I pray in the name that is above every other name that this day we will see the beginning of such a revival right here. They are coming in in a flow, Isaiah 2, 1 to 3, Micah 4, 1 to 3, in a flow, in a flow. So a revival is set to occur when the heart of man begins to pant. When walking in the fear of God becomes a way of life. When the multitudes begin to gather in numbers that cannot be numbered. What is in a revival for us? Three quick points. Number one, every revival is a spiritual launching pad to our high places. Because as we see a revival break loose in the description of Jeremiah. In Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19 to 21, what happens? Nobles begin to arise. When the fire comes down, flight goes up. When the fire comes down, flight goes up. I know and I have heard and I can only imagine the giants that arose from the Rajoba revival. I can imagine. You know, when you have been part of a revival, even when you don't know, you have been marked by that revival for another one. I saw with my eyes what I've never seen since then. I saw streets shut down. I saw a takeover. I saw miracles. I saw signs. Invisible guests were coming to our services and hugging people. And bones on their faces disappeared. What are you talking about? That is a revival. Raise your hand again if you are tired of the norm. And I decree in the name of Jesus. For every hungry soul, we will see it happen again in our days. Let me hear the loudest amen. Let me hear the strongest amen. Spiritual launching pad. In Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2. Revive thy walk in the midst of the year. In verse 19, 17 to 19. He said, although the fig tree may not blossom. There may not be fruits in the vine. Everything may look like it has failed. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join the God of my salvation. He will make my feet like Heinz feet. And he will make me to walk away. Let me hear you scream it. Louder. High places. That's why we said it is a launching pad. Number two. What is in a revival for us? Every revival culminates in supernatural restoration. Of the redemptive dignity of believers. In Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17, the Lord our God in the midst of thee is mighty. You read from verse 18 to verse 20, you see restoration. Joel chapter 2 verse 26 to 27, when the revival breaks loose, restoration. That will be dealt with a bit more next Sunday. Number 3, what is in a revival for us? A revival delivers speedy answers to prayer. Delay of answers is terminated in the midst of a revival. John chapter 15 verse 16. How then do we provoke a revival. Seven quick ways for today. Number one, we must catch a vision of a revival. We must know what a revival looks like. There is a recent revival in 1995 
And I just began thinking about it. The same time that revival was taking place here in the United States of America, it was happening far back on 38 Rajoba Street in Lagos, same year. I'm talking about the revival that broke loose in 1995 here in Florida. Massive outbreak. It was a usual Father's Day service. But the Holy Ghost came in and there became a wave of outpouring that held for six years. By 12 noon, 7 p.m., there was no room outside. People traveled from everywhere to fault the revival, but the power hit them when they came. It happened on our shores here. God is no respecter of locations, but is a respecter of our hearts. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. It's called the Brownsville Revival. It began June 18, 1995. In Brownsville Assemblies of God in Pensacola, Florida. Six years, 95 to 2000. Over 4 million people attended those services in six years. No invitation. Fire. Fire. Raise your hand. I'm tired of the usual. I'm tired of the usual. Let the fire fall again. Let the fire fall again. Raise your voice. Let the fire. Let the fire. I didn't come here to preach. I didn't come here with a note as it were. I came here with a heart panting. A heart longing. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. The fire fall. Raise your hand, people. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall again. Let the fire fall. 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 Thank you, Lord. We must catch a vision. Every Sunday as the Holy Spirit leads me, I'll be showing you different revivals that have taken place. The first major one in the first church was on Pentecost. But there have been several Pentecost experiences. I don't know about you, but I believe 2022 may just be that year again. I want to believe that this church may just be that place again. For an outbreak. An outbreak of fire. An outbreak of a revival. Don't mistake crowd with revival. What separates a crowd from a fired crowd is fire. When the fire falls, everyone on the pews becomes usable. You touch someone to be healed. Who came for the same service? And the miracle takes place as if somebody ordained touched them. Please throw away your titles this month. Throw away your titles this season. And catch the fire, the fire. We must see it again. The Lord told me some years ago, he said... Tell them to stop asking, where is the God of Elijah? I am asking them, where are the Elijahs of God? Who will take a stand for God? Kill me if you want, but I will speak the truth whether you like it or not. I would rather have Jehovah on my side than a congregation on my side. That's what a revival is. But catch a vision of a revival. Number two, we must return to God. We read that Jeremiah 3. Jeremiah 5, Jeremiah 6, return, 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 return. I'll read that at the end of the service. Revelation 3. You know, he said, you are not cold or hot. You are lukewarm. That is the picture of this church. I am telling you the mind of God because I've been warned to tell you it is all right when it is not. You are neither whole, cold nor hot. He said, I will spit you out of my mouth. I am tired of a lukewarm church. I want a church on fire. I want a church on fire. Now, look at this in verse 20. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door. Many of us came today for open doors for more breakthroughs. You can have breakthroughs without God. But he said, the door that must open first is your heart. So, we must return to God. 
where the priest and the people we say forgive us oh lord we pray forgive our sins oh lord we cry forgive our hatred among one another we cry forgive our anger against one another we cry our evil wishing wickedness among one another celebrating at the downfall of another in the same church forgive us oh lord we cry forgive us for being lukewarm forgive us for being traditional forgive us be, be, for being pretentious forgive us that is the cry of a revival make me a vessel unto honor make me fit for the master's use prepare to every good work Number three, how do we provoke a revival? We must become the revival. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9, it's like fire shot up in my bones. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 3, clothing tongues of fire sat upon each one of their heads. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1 to 5, is this not a brand plucked out of fire? We must become the revival ourselves. Number four, we must expect a revival. Oh, I expect it. Maybe today will just be that day when it breaks loose. But I expect it. A church hungry, a church on fire. The priest and the people expecting a revival. There's a place in Atlanta, Georgia today. Since 2006 till 2022 as I'm speaking, prayer has never ceased there. I discovered that 24-7. You go there at any time, there's somebody praying. You think revival comes with eating? There is a price to pay. There is a price to pay. So we must expect it. And if we expect it, we must become it first. Number five, we must engage in effective prayer and fasting. In Acts chapter 1 verse 14, as they expected the revival, they went into prayer. They went into fasting. And by Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 5, the fire came. Number six, how do we provoke a revival? The church, this church must walk in one accord. Why are we praying and the revival has not yet hit? Acts 1.14, they were in one accord. Place that please on the screen. With one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary also. Then look at Acts chapter 2 verse 1 quick. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Oh, where did the fire meet them? With one accord. You jump to Acts chapter 4, you find the gate. When the fire came down, with one accord. When will brotherly love return back? With one accord. With one accord. Sometimes you can feel the tension in the air. With one accord. With one accord. With one accord. With one accord. When will the people fall in love with one another? When will the people fall in love with their priest? Let me tell you and announce to you, nobody is perfect including yourself. But until one accord is restored, a revival is far from rich. Number seven, we must obey all the commands. All the commands. I found out in Acts chapter 1 verse 4 to 14, Jesus told them, go and tarry, wait. About 500 people were there at his ascension. Only 120 waited. 350 thought there was nothing to wait for. They saw him go up and as he went up, they went back to their house. But 120 to 150 said, we will go to the upper room. And in obedience, the fire came. The fire came. The fire came. The fire came. It is coming again. I said, it is coming again. Let me hear you shout, Amen! Bill Humphrey and Corinne Russell on the book Reclaiming a Revival said, Revival or we never rest. Revival now, oh God, we cry. Revival now or we will die. And they went on to say, this is because America is at a tipping point. Being torn about with the seams and convulsing deeply in moral and spiritual confusion. That's because the church in America has failed to shine the light. Failed to demonstrate the reality of the gospel. Failed to show the world a better way. In fact, for a full generation now, rather than the church changing the world, the world has changed the church. But today, there is a change. Rise on your feet right now. 
Lift your hands and cry. Revive me, O Lord. Revive me, O Lord. All over this place. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Revive us again. Church is not meant to be a club. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Hallelujah. Raise your hand and weep before your God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Revive us. Again. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Revive us. Revelation chapter 3. Verse 15. I know thy works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot. So choose one. So then because thou art lukewarm. And neither cold nor hot. I will spew you out of my mouth. Because thou sayest I am rich. And increase with goods. I have testimonies. And I don't need anything. But you do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind and naked. I cancel the verse 18. To buy me gold tried in the fire. That thou mayest be rich. Rich towards God, not rich in the account. And white raiment that thou mayest be clothed. Clothed with righteousness. That the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye serves that you may see. Verse 19. I'm doing this because I love you, he says. As many as I love, I rebuke. And chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hear my voice and open my door, I will come and sup with him. The season has changed right before us. Pride cannot survive in the midst of a revival. When would we take the altar of God seriously? When would we take repentance seriously? When a revival comes, you become sensitive to God. God is not pleased with us. That's the word. He's not happy with us. Man may look on the outside, but God sees into the heart. Without any official coming out, I received that. I want you to take this opportunity. There's an outpouring looming at us. The clouds are thick. The rain is about to fall. Wherever you are, online and on ground, with nobody clapping, it's not about us. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus at the center and marked by the fear of God. I don't know who you are. And even if it's the entire church, the altar is ready. Nobody follows you. Nobody takes your name. What is the point taking down your name and your name is not in his book? Wherever you are, slide out of the seats right now and run and repent before the Lord. Whatever group you are in from choir, in case you are here backing up, leave here and go. Go and make it right with Jesus. Come out right now with speed. It may be too late. Rush out right now. It is Jesus that I want. Nobody is following you anywhere. 
Maybe it's your first time in church. I wonder what is happening. We are just at the verge of a revival. I refuse to preach what I will not see. I'm not the average pastor. I'm not coming here with an out. If God said revival, we must see it again. Run out right now. Run out right now. It is marked by repentance. I don't know why you know you have missed the mark. But when the Holy Ghost comes in, he begins to point and say, you've missed it there. You've missed it there. You've missed it there. You've missed it there. Run out right now. Run out. You can kneel down. You can lay down. This is God you are talking to. It's not a church receiving you. This is God you are talking to. Run out right now. There are many more people who must make it right with him. In case you are hearing me, you are in the children's church, you are wherever in the parking lot, run out right now. The fire is burning here. We are talking about a revival. We are not talking about a church program. Maybe you've missed it somewhere and said, I must make it right, right now. I must make it right, right now, right now, right now. Run! The altar is open. That anger, that covetousness, that wickedness, unforgiveness, it must end today. He's not pleased with it. 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 Run out right now. Run out right now. Somebody must respond again. Somebody must make that choice right now. There's an outpouring looming at us. There's an outpouring right at the corner. There is an outpouring. We must not miss it. Come on, come on, come on. Make it quickly. Make it swiftly. And then begin to talk to God by yourself. Talk to Him by yourself. He has pointed out one area to you where you must make it right. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lord is telling me there are also people who are unfaithful in their marriages. Run out now. It doesn't matter. Don't miss it. Unfaithfulness must give way right now. Right now. Right now. There are individuals struggling with unforgiveness. So your father hurt you 15 years ago and you are still offended. No, let it go. Those are things that will hinder a revival. Let it go. Slandering one another behind. Let it go. Quickly come out right now. I'm hearing that he wants to touch you. I'm hearing that he wants to make you a mark of revival in this generation. Raise your voice. Everyone in front, begin to talk to the Lord. Forgive me in this area. I have sinned. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Forgive me in that area. Forgive me in this area. Oh yes. Cleanse me, oh Lord. Oh, sexual misconduct. It must let go. It must be gone today. It must be gone today. Oh, dealing treacherously, financially. It must be over. In the name of Jesus. More people are coming. Because I hear the Spirit say there are more. Quickly, before we pray. Those online as well, make sure you are connected right now. And everyone in front, we are going to pray. Church, you stretch forth your hands and just pray the Holy Ghost as we pray. Those of us in front, say with me, Lord Jesus, I return to you. And if you are coming for the first time, I come to you. Forgive me my sins. Heal me of my backsliding. Today, I make it right with you. That the world says it is right, doesn't make it right. Thank you, Jesus. For this new day in Jesus name Amen Heavenly Father thank you for marking these precious ones all by yourself I give you praise and I give you glory in Jesus name Amen Wow I'm sure you were blessed by this video that you just watched the truth is this without action Revelation is impotent. And so what will you do having heard the things you have heard? I'm sure something has been fired into your spirit. It's now time to take action. Make sure you like, you subscribe, you comment, and you share this video with everyone. Let's spread the fire across the nations of the earth because we will see a revival in our generation. God bless you.